Hello everyone, let me introduce myself. My name is Nafika Chayaning Alfiardi. I'm from Biology Education of Semarang State University. Today, I want to present my research about fermented traditional food of tempe with the famous Rhizopus sp. This research has often been carried out using various methods, but in my research, I vary the number of Rhizopus sp in the tempe. Okay, let's start it. Just for intermezzo, based on article from bbcgoodfood.com, tempeh has around 170 calories per 100 grams and low in carbohydrate, of which a very small fraction is sugar. Furthermore, tempeh contains some B vitamins which we need to help us break down and get energy from our food. Introduction Tempeh is one of the traditional food ingredients that are made through the fermentation process. For Indonesian people, tempeh is a very popular food. The basic ingredients for making tempeh are soybean cook and inoculate pure culture of Rhizopus sp or user inoculum. User namely an inoculum commonly used by tempeh makers. is a collection mycelium and fungal spores attached to the leaf of hibiscus ciliaceus or hibiscus leaf. Mushroom Rhizopus orize is a fungus that is often used in making tempeh. Rhizopus orize mushroom is safe for consumption because it doesn't produce toxin and able to produce lactic acid. Rhizopus orize mushroom have ability to break down complex fats into triglycerides and amino acids. Rhizopus sp able to grow well over the pH range 3.4 until 6. In research as well as long fermentation time, tempeh pH increase until pH 8.4, so that the fungus decrease due to high pH is not suitable for mushroom growth. Tempeh is a solid substrate fermentation which is soybean fermentation involving mold acti activity Rhizopus sp. The better the mycelium mold grow, the more also the fermentation product produced. The, the denser the substrate, the more difficult it is mold to grow through the substrate. When the mold gets harder for growing, the less fermentation process that occurs in the substrate. This research is aimed to determine the fermentation process in tempeh. The following tools are needed is pan, spoon, plastic, and toothpick. The following material are needed is soybean, yeast tempeh, water, and rice flour. Method First, namely prepare the tools and material. Second, wash the soybean thoroughly with running water. Third, soak the soybean in the container for one night so that it sits so that the seeds on the soybeans can be separated. Fourth, boil the soybeans for one hour until the texture of the soybean begins to soften. Fifth, add the tempeh yeast to the boiled soybean. In this experiment, three treatments were used, namely treatment one, a quarter spoon yeast per 150 gram soybeans, treatment two, one third spoon yeast per 150 gram soybean, treatment three, one spoon yeast per 150 gram soybean. 6. Stir, six stir, stir until the yeast and soybean are well planned, so that fermentation can occur evenly. 7. Put the result of mixing yeast and soybean into the plastic. 8. Puncture the surface of the plastic that has, have, that has become a tempeh mold, so that hot steam generated from the fermentation process can come out. 9. Incubate the tempeh at room temperature for one half days. This is the result of the experiment. Based on the table, it can be seen that, that in all treatments, the resulting color and pH data show the same result, that is red in color and pH 7. However, in the compact crow data, its treatment show different results. For a quarter spoon yeast treatment, compact crow show the results are less compact. For one third spoon yeast treatment, compact crow show the results are slightly compact. For one spoon yeast treatment, compact crow show the results are very compact. Discussion. Fermentation will take place well and quickly when assisted by optimal temperature condition, the right amount of yeast or inoculum, and the and an acidic pH of approximately pH 4 until 5. After 36 hours, the tempeh that we have made with one spoon on, of inoculum has a denser texture. White mycelium grows to cover the entire surface of the tempeh, and the serpent composition is more complex. Then, after 72 hours, the tempeh we had made turned out to the overgrown with mold. The stench and the stain has started to smell. The bacteria that grow more in tempeh, which are given a quarter spoon in a column, because the fungal mycelium is only a little, so that the bacteria can grow well at the same time. 
In the process of making seven tempeh, the condition of the room or the environment around is it must also be sterile. A room that is rather humid also affects the growth of mushroom mycelium. Conclusion In order to get a good quality tempeh, a yeast or inoculum is needed which is equal to the measurement and quality soybean. Proper processing of soybeans is needed so that soybeans are not contaminated with other ingredients. In tempeh yes, there are several fungi such as Rhizopus oligosporus and Rhizopus oryzae. The manufacture of tempeh really depends on the type of main ingredients in the form of so soybean, the type and amount of yes or inoculum, pH, and the appropriate environmental condition. Okay, everyone, thank you for your attention for all of my presentation research. I hope that this research will benefit you for future research. I apologize if there are ma any mistakes in the presentation of this research. Then, see you later. Bye!